Hey everyone, it's Saoirse, and today we're going to do some cozy tea and poetry time, which we haven't done in a while. Caddy is getting situated on my lap, and we are going to dig into some Mary Oliver. I've also got my tea over here. It's a little bit warm, but I didn't burn my tongue, I don't think. It's mint tea. So grab whatever beverage you would like, a snack, a blanket, a cat, I don't know. And get ready for some nature poetry. A lot of the ones that I pulled out of here have to do with themes that maybe aren't the happiest. I definitely did pick some happy ones from here. But you know me, and I always lean more towards, like, death poetry. Um, but she, the way that she writes is so beautiful, and it's all about accepting the cycle of life and loving everything about it while we can. And this collection was all um, arranged by Mary Oliver shortly before her death. Come back. After reading Lucretius, I go to the pond. The slippery green frog that went to his death in the heron's pink throat was my small brother, and the heron with the white plumes like a crown on his head, who is washing now his great sword beak in the shining pond, is my tall, thin brother. My heart dresses in black and dances. I love the way that she looks at she looks at death from different angles. She accepts that it's necessary for this bird to eat, but she can mourn the frog at the same time. I hope you like the vibe of the Christmas tree. Um, it has been very, very cozy in here. Everything is soft and plush and lit with tiny little string lights, but I always have my string lights up all year because I just love them so much. Anyway. This one is about a dog. She has a lot of dog poems. She even has an entire um, book of poetry called Dog Songs. And this one gets me. Benjamin who came from who knows where. What shall I do? When I pick up the broom, he leaves the room. When I fuss with kindling, he runs for the yard. Then he's back, and we hug for a long time. In his low-to-the-ground chest, I can hear his heart slowing down. Then I rub his shoulders and kiss his feet, and fondle his long hound ears. Benny, I say, don't worry. I also know the way the old life haunts the new. I love it. That dog was treated poorly before and abused and and those things linger um, but the way that they comfort each other is so beautiful these are all by the way um, chronological going backwards so her most recent poetry collection that she pulls from is Felicity in 2015 and the last one, which is the earliest, is No Voyage and Other Poems, 1963 and 1965. What a career. And what a life. We should be well prepared. The way the plovers cry goodbye, the way the dead fox keeps on looking down the hill with open eye, the way the leaves fall and then there's the long wait. The way someone says, we must never meet again. The way mold spots the cake. The way sourness overtakes the cream. The way the river water rushes by, never to return. The way the days go by, never to return. The way somebody comes back, but only in a dream. I just liked that one. It's very melancholy. I don't always understand what she's talking about, but I enjoy it. I love mint tea. Mm, it truly is the best. And I think it doesn't have caffeine, which is good for me. The, po 
poet with his face in his hands. You want to cry aloud for your mistakes, but to tell the truth, the world doesn't need any more of that sound. So if you're going to do it and can't stop yourself, if your pretty mouth can't hold it in, at least go by yourself across the forty fields and the forty dark inclines of rocks and water to the place where the falls are flinging out their white sheets like crazy, and there is a cave behind all that jubilation and water fun, and you can stand there under it and roar all you want and nothing will be disturbed. You can drip with despair all afternoon and still, on a green branch, its wings just lightly touched by the passing foil of the water, the thrush, puffing out its spotted breast, will sing of the perfect stone-hard beauty of everything. I love the, the way that that poem just goes and goes and goes with hardly any stops in it. And then finally it stops at the end with the the bird showing us that even though things are truly terrible sometimes there's always something beautiful to look at and whether or not that's enough to distract us who knows but it's good to it's good to remember lingering in happiness after rain after many days without rain it stays cool private and cleansed under the trees and the dampness there, married now to gravity, falls branch to branch, leaf to leaf, down to the ground, where it will disappear, but not, of course, vanish, except to our eyes. The roots of the oaks will have their share, and the white threads of the grasses, and the cushion of moss, a few drops, round as pearls, will enter the mole's tunnel. And soon so many small stones, buried for a thousand years, will feel themselves being touched. Mm, what lovely imagery. I, I just love the way she talks about nature, and it is usually very simple. But then nature is simple. As long as you're not getting too complicated about uh, molecular biology or something. Is that even a thing? I don't know. But it is just simple to enjoy rain the smell that comes after rain, um, the way that animals react to different weather. Well, you have to see my, this is my new vintage cat sweater, because it's cozy. Just as the calendar began to say summer, I went out of the schoolhouse fast and through the gardens into the woods and spent all summer forgetting what I'd been taught, two times two and diligence and so forth, how to be modest and useful and how to succeed and so forth, machines and oil and plastic and money and so forth. By fall I had healed somewhat, but was summoned back to the chalky rooms and the desks to sit and remember the way the river kept rolling its pebbles, the way the wild wrens sang, though they hadn't a penny in the bank the way the flowers were dressed in nothing but light. That has to be one of my favorites. I... <sighs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started on um, how much time we spend not in nature, whether because of school or work. Um, these things all get in the way, and I, I really like when um, when teachers will try to make a difference and teach outside. I had some teachers that did that, and it's Florida, so it's it's pretty unbearable most of the year, but when it was nice, sometimes they'd take us outside. And I had a class once in college where at the end of the, the semester, our teacher had us walk outside, and it was called an ambulatory Whitman class where we talked about Walt Whitman and wandered, and I think some people were barefoot. And um, we have a beautiful campus. This is at the University of South Florida in St. Pete. It's on the water. And um, it was very peaceful. And then he had us run into a library and, and yell something from a poem, which was thrilling. But yeah, education doesn't have to be all white walls and, and smart boards now rather than chalkboards. We, we have other things to learn and a lot of those things can only be learned outside. And usually, just by ourselves without the help of a teacher. Black oaks. 
Okay, not one can write a symphony, or a dictionary, or even a letter to an old friend, full of remembrance and comfort. Not one can manage a single sound, though the blue jays carp and whistle all day in the branches, without the push of the wind. But to tell the truth, after a while I'm pale with longing for their thick bodies ruffled with lichen, and you can't keep me from the woods, from the tonnage of their shoulders, and their shining green hair. Today is a day like any other, twenty-four hours, a little sunshine, a little rain. Listen, says Ambition, nervously shifting her weight from one boot to another. Why don't you get going? For there I am, in the mossy shadows, under the trees. And to tell the truth, I don't want to let go of the wrists of idleness. I don't want to sell my life for money. I don't even want to come in out of the rain. That's another of my favorites. I love the way she personifies ambition. The way that it, it pulls us and not just ambition, but guilt, um, the idea that we aren't doing enough. <clears throat> and I realize that that is, that is so common a feeling, that we are not doing enough with our time. And imagine what life would be like if we didn't have that voice in our head, if we just lived, if we just existed and enjoyed the things that we enjoy, um, and didn't always feel so much pressure do something else, because what's wrong with standing under the trees? The trees are beautiful. When death comes. When death comes like the hungry bear in autumn, when death comes and takes all the bright coins from his purse to buy me and snaps the purse shut, when death comes like the measle pox, when death comes like an iceberg between the shoulder blades, I want to step through the door full of curiosity, wondering, what is it going to be like, that cottage of darkness? And therefore I look upon everything as a brotherhood and a sisterhood, and I look upon time as no more than an idea, and I consider eternity as another possibility, and I think of each life as a flower, as common as a field daisy, and as singular, and each name a comfortable music in the mouth, tending as all music does toward silence, and each body a lion of courage and something precious to the earth, when it's over, I want to say, all my life, I was a bride married to amazement. I was the bridegroom, taking the world into my arms. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened or full of argument. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. I love the way she seems to fully accept death as part of life and welcomes it. Um, I think a lot of us, as I talked about in my feline philosophy video, spend so much of our time fearing death um, as something that is unknown. But to look at it with a lens of uh, curiosity and even gratefulness for what we are able to enjoy now. It's, it's a better way to think about it, in my opinion. White flowers. Last night in the fields, I lay down in the darkness to think about death, but instead I fell asleep, as if in a vast and sloping room filled with those white flowers that open all summer, sticky and untidy in the warm fields. When I woke, the morning light was just slipping in front of the stars, and I was covered with blossoms. I don't know how it happened. I don't know if my body went diving down under the sugary vines in some sleep-sharpened affinity with the depths, or whether that green energy rose like a wave and curled over me, claiming me in its husky arms. I pushed them away, but I didn't rise. Never in my life had I felt so plush or so slippery, or so resplendently empty. Never in my life had I felt myself so near that porous line where my own body was done with and the roots and the stems and the flowers began. Springer. Don't lose your footing. There you go. I love her, um, her sense of being one with the world. Ooh, he might knock over my notes. Oh no, he's just gonna sit right in front of them. Just a moment. I can't see. Two ninety-five is what I just did. Three sixty-seven. He's just sitting right in front of my page numbers. That's okay.
Ooh, is this really the next one? Because, um, this might actually be my favorite. This is the one that, the, like, the first poem that I read by Mary Oliver and what made me want to continue. Because you know how I feel about a certain tiny little animal that lives under the earth. This is called Moles. Under the leaves, under the first loose levels of earth, they're there. Quick as beetles, blind as bats, shy as hares, but seen less than these. Traveling among the pale girders of apple root, rock shelf, nests of insects, and black pastures of bulbs, peppery and packed full of the sweetest food, spring flowers. Field after field, you can see the traceries of their long, lonely walks. Then the rains blur even this frail hint of them. So excitable, so plush, so willing to continue generation after generation, accomplishing nothing but their brief physical lives as they live and die, pushing and shoving with their stubborn muzzles against the whole earth, finding it delicious. That is such a beautiful poem. It's so beautiful. Um, I don't have many mole things I can show you right now, but I, I love moles so much. I think they're just perfect. And the way that she describes them is, is precisely how I would want to if I had the, the proper words for it. And I also love the way that she structured this poem. It's, it's very like, you know, there's not much on each line. And the very end there, the last word is delicious and it has its own line. I, I love that she gives such importance to that one word and just leading up to it, pushing and shoving with their stubborn muzzles. Oh, so cute. It's so, so precious. And the, the way that she gives every animal um, mention in these poems, I mean, she really does talk about a lot of different animals. And they all seem to be the most important one to her. You know, they're all special. At Blackwater Pond. At Blackwater Pond, the tossed waters have settled after a night of rain. I dip my cupped hands. I drink a long time. It tastes like stone, leaves, fire. It falls cold into my body, waking the bones. I hear them deep inside me whispering, Oh, what is that beautiful thing that just happened? I love that so much. I have um, fond memories of drinking the coldest, clearest, purest water in the mountains while through hiking the Appalachian Trail. And it just doesn't get better than that. Just being able to drink straight from the source, um, but always filtering it, of course, just in case. But I, I love that idea of your bones whispering what is that beautiful thing that just happened because it truly is beautiful and you can feel this whenever you drink a really cold wonderful beverage on a hot day perhaps it just fills you with this gorgeous feeling of I don't know being alive to feel the way that the cold just spreads through you as it goes down your throat it is incomparable look at this sweet baby i love you so much okay that was 393 403 just three more i think i think we can do it sleeping in the forest i thought the earth remembered me she took me back so tenderly arranging her dark skirts her pockets full of lichens and seeds I slept as never before, a stone on the riverbed, nothing between me and the white fire of the stars but my thoughts, and they floated light as moths among the branches of the perfect trees. All night I heard the small kingdoms breathing around me, the insects and the birds who do their work in the darkness. All night I rose and fell, as if in water, grappling with a luminous doom. By morning I had vanished at least a dozen times into something better. Again, something um, that I think I started to really love on the trail, and now I do it 
um, regularly is sleeping outside um, because I have this great enclosed catio where my cats can enjoy nature and um, I like to lie out there and, and take naps and it brings me back to all those times of waking up and hearing every single sound that nature has to offer and sometimes hearing some really scary stuff at night uh, but usually just beautiful owls that wouldn't stop hooting. They're so wonderful. Okay, night flight. Now this one is rare in that it's not, it's not like about her interacting with nature, it's actually about being on an airplane. And it really struck me when I first read it. Traveling at 30,000 feet, we see how much of Earth still lies in wilderness, till terminals occur like miracles to civilize the paralyzing dark. Buckled for landing to a tilting chair, I think, if miracle or accident should send us up, should send us on across the upper air, how many miles or nights or years to go before the mind, with its huge ego paling before the heart, all expectations spent, should read the meaning of the scene below. But now already the loved ones gather under the dome of welcome as we glide over the final jutting mountainside, across the suburbs tangled in their lights, and settled softly on the earth once more, rise in the fierce assumption of our lives, discarding smoothly as we embark, disembark, all thoughts that held us wiser for a moment, up there alone in the impartial dark. She just puts into words what I can't. Um, I personally really, really don't like flying, but it does. It makes you think so many thoughts that um, maybe would not come into your head were you not on a giant piece of metal flying through the air, um, just trusting the person who is at the controls. It's terrifying, but such an interesting perspective. Okay, this is the last one in the book, and it's the last one I will read. Hey, cozy baby. Look, she's got her arms over my arm. Oh, my love. Morning in a new land. In trees still dripping night, some nameless birds woke, shook out their arrowy wings, and sang slowly like finches sifting through a dream. The pink sun fell like glass into the fields, two chestnuts and a dapple gray, their shoulders wet with light, their dark hair streaming climbed the hill, the last mist fell away, and under the trees beyond time's brittle drift I stood like Adam in his lonely garden on that first morning, shaken out of sleep, rubbing his eyes, listening, parting the leaves, like tissue on some vast incredible gift. <sighs> Lovely. Wasn't that a treat? So she has a lot of poems that are that have religious tones, and I definitely resonated more with the the poems about death. Um, but just all these themes of nature, death, life, beauty, being one with the earth, they're all just so lovely, and it was really nice to read a collection that she curated herself. So I hope you enjoyed our Cozy tea and poetry time. I know I did. I'm really enjoying this tea. Does anybody else leave the tea bag in just forever and let it get stronger and stronger? Um, I have to go move some furniture around because my cat is looking for a chair. That, oh, never mind. She figured out. She's so smart. I don't give my cats enough credit. They are very intelligent. Okay. I think I will go rustle up some dinner and post another video that I filmed before this one. Time doesn't mean anything. Thank you so much for joining me and enjoying some lovely poetry. Please tell me about your favorite poems in the comments. Tell me about your favorite poets. Do you like Mary Oliver? Did you know about her before right now? I'm really glad that I now know about her because I just love nature poetry. It makes me want to write. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time.